all season, 2016 FCS champion James Madison has looked like one of the subdivision's two dominant teams. But a trip to Texas for the FCS title game is earned, not awarded. This season's playoff journey starts against an emerging Monmouth program full of confidence after its first ever playoff win. Round two of the FCS playoffs is about to kick off. James Madison and Monmouth are next. They've been looking forward to this one in Harrisonburg, the chance to host once again in the FCS playoffs. Number two, James Madison, hosting upset-minded Monmouth this afternoon. Monmouth having its best season ever. The Hawks got here with a win over Holy Cross last weekend. And here you see the bottom half of the bracket. The winner of this one gets either South Dakota State or Northern Iowa. Here in Harrisonburg, alongside former Georgia quarterback Hudson Mason, I'm Jonathan Yardley. Hudson, we get to see right off the bat one of the big dogs, North Dakota State and James Madison, have been 1-2 all year, 1-2 for a reason. Yeah, a great team, no doubt, great players, but uh, they've been here before. Six straight FCS playoff appearances for this senior group of class. Uh, I think for Monmouth today, you can give up a lot of yardage in between the 20s, but you got to force field goals, and you got to have a stiff neck mentality. They average 42 points per game. you got to force them into field goals. That's on the defensive side for Monmouth, but on the offensive side, they have a treat for us. Pete Guerrero, the country's leading rusher in FCS, can break it at any time. Yeah, he'll probably go over the 2,000-yard mark today. Three games straight of over 200 rushing yards. I think he has to have that carry the team type performance again today. This is where he's the most dangerous, out in space. He's got great speed for a big bulky back. Defensively, if you're James Madison, you've got to be really precise in your run fits. He is the only scholarship running back they have, by the way. He's got to carry the load. Kurt Signetti, first year as the head coach at James Madison, came from Elon. He beat the Dukes last year. This year, he's made them really hard to beat on both sides. Yeah, and when you break this offense and defense down, you see why they're top five in almost every major statistical category. There's no really positional weakness. they got great team speed on both sides of the ball, and they've got Division I transfers littered all throughout this roster. James Madison, one of the favorites, trying to take step one toward an FCS title. Round two of the FCS playoffs kicks off when we come back. Getting ready to open round two of the FCS playoffs, and that means the big dogs are out. The seeded teams had a bye last week. Our first look in the postseason at number two, James Madison, hosting on a cold but clear, perfect football playoff afternoon. Camden Wise getting set to kick it off. The Dukes won the toss and elected to defer. They will let their defense, which is all world in terms of intimidation, start things off. Eddie Morales and Lonnie Moore back deep to receive for Monmouth. Second round of the FCS playoffs underway. Lonnie Moore takes it at the five for the Big South champion Hawks. He is dispossessed. The ball is loose. Still on the ground, Monmouth looks like they were able to cover it. What a hit. Solomon Van Horse on special teams laying out. Lonnie Moore and forcing Monmouth to start at the six. Well, they talked about special teams, specifically kickoff coverage, which has been an issue for James Madison the past couple weeks. And could you ask for a better start of putting your hat on the ball by Solomon Van Horse and backing this Monmouth offense up? Kenji Bahar, the quarterback. Pete Guerrero, the tailback, going to see so much of the ball today. And right off the bat, he is gone. Oh. He is a track star. Nobody is catching Pete Guerrero. 94 yards to the house. <laughs> you talk about announcing your presence with authority. Pete Guerrero said, what's up? Well, you talked about his track speed and being backed up here. Watch him just hit it out the gate right here, the crease up the middle. And then we talked about his background as a track player, as a track runner. 200, 100 meter yard guy, and you give him a crease, it's 95 yards to the house. What an incredible start for Monmouth. 
We came in talking about it's going to be a strength on strength matchup. And James Madison, number one in FCS, only giving up 62 rushing yards a game. Wow. 90, 94 right off the bat. Yeah, you, you get a chain after that. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better start in terms of the first offensive play because it really wasn't a great start on your on your kickoff. Uh, you fumbled the ball on your kickoff return, but that, that's exactly what Monmouth needed. You know, you know, Coach Callahan talked to us earlier in the week, fast start. Every coach says that, and usually fast start sometimes you would like to get points on the first possession, but best case scenario, you just flip the field. We flipped the scoreboard 95 yards to the house. Kurt Signetti, we saw him smile before the game, which is a rare, rare occurrence. No smiles right now. I that mean, was, is quite a start. It, it, he hasn't seen that all year. It, it, his defense is literally number one in FCS, only giving up 62 rushing yards a game. They haven't given up that many rushing yards in their last six games. And, and we, we just put about, up 94 on one play. Uh, we talked about in the open about run fits. And, and for this defense, specifically with Pete Guerrero, and that's what you saw in that replay. Your linebackers and safeties taking wrong angles and leading creases open for Guerrero to take it to the house. Matt Mascara with the short kick doesn't want JNU to get a big return and whistles flying everywhere did he fair catch it he started taking off to run D'Angelo Amos he didn't think he fair caught it they're calling it a fair catch it appears and David see where the referee has marked the spot at the 27 So that was one play, and it was a big one, but we got a lot of football left, and this James Madison offense is no slouch. Ben DiNucci, second year as the starting quarterback, transferred from Pitt. They didn't have any scholarships available. He walked on, has won the job two years in a row, and he slings it to Ben Polk, grad transfer from Penn State, who is the biggest addition to this offense. Well, I mentioned the trend about uh, grad transfers, and that's a grad transfer to a grad transfer. DiNucci to Polk right there. Polk transferred from Penn State. He was a 16-game starter there, and that's what they like to do in this offense is give him options out wide. Quick throw out to the near side. Jake Brown is bottled up. Tymir Berry, the cornerback, in on the tackle for Monmouth. And these DBs for Monmouth are going to have their hands full today, not only in the passing game, because Anthony Bobick, the defensive coordinator, is going to have to bring extra pressure and leave those guys out on the island. He's got to be able to trust his DBs to play one-on-one -on -one today so they can commit to stopping the run. Jawan Hamilton to carry. He tries to turn the corner, and he's slung down after a short pickup. Evan Powell, the linebacker who had a couple of interceptions against Holy Cross, brings up third down. And this is a big part of the game, specifically third and long. And if you're Monmouth defensively, you see you see them bringing in their pass-up defense, getting more of their specialized pass rushers on the field. But Kahari Scarlett, number 46, is going to get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity here on third and seven. Got to get to the quarterback. They look for Riley Stapleton, the wide receiver of the brother tandem, and he's got the catch in the first down. He's a redshirt senior. Younger brother Dylan is just a straight-up senior. 11-yard pickup and the first down for JMU. Stapleton's a big target, listed at 6'5", 230. They can play him at tight end. They can uh, detach him out wide, get him, get him an individual isolation route like they did there. And that was on Tymee Berry, the defensive back for Monmouth. Danucci to throw on first down. Quickly gets it out to Polk. He's got space. Ben Polk going to break one, and James Madison responds right away. 49 yards for the score. Ben Polk. Brandon Polk goes over a thousand yards with his 10th touchdown catch and run of the year. Well, Danucci just throws the bubble route out here. He gets great perimeter blocking by Riley Stapleton. And Brandon Polk with his Big Ten speed takes it to the house. That's what this offense of James Madison is built around. Giving their quarterback the option based on the numbers in the box 
and the numbers in the perimeter. If they get blitz off the edge or they get numbers that are advantageous to throw the bubble route, they'll throw it. Stapleton, who threw the block, was slowed on the play, but he has gotten to his feet, and we'll take a quick break with him. James Madison about to tie it up. Brandon Polk responds to Monmouth's big play with one of his own. And James Madison an extra point away from tying the score here after the stunning early touchdown from Monmouth's Pete Guerrero. After the injury timeout, Ethan Ratke on for the extra point. Trying to tie this one up. Two of the top ten offenses in the FCS and we have seen why in the early going. They both score first with significant first plays. Mon missed the first play from scrimmage. And we'll see Guerrero back presumably for a, a longer drive for more plays in a moment. But he got things started with a bang. Yeah, again, it was bad angles taken up front by your linebackers and your secondary for James Madison. And Guerrero's just too fast. If you give him a crease in the secondary, he'll take it to the house. That was the first play for Monmouth offensively to start the game. And then James Madison responded really really well. But what you saw Monmouth defensively is them as well take some bad angles in the secondary. And so both coaches told us coming in this week, you know, both offenses are really good. You don't get to this point in the playoffs if you're not good offensively. So as a defensive coordinator, you kind of have to – you have to pick your poison of how you're going to slow down uh, the opposing offense. And I think both of them feel like they want to start with slowing down the run. But for James Madison, that means trying to get the ball on the perimeter to one-on-one -on -one matchups. So usually you get the first drive, and whether you give up a touchdown or not, you have a lot of adjustments to make. One play, I don't know how many adjustments James Madison defensive coordinator Corey Hederman can make off of that. Now Lonnie Moore had the ball knocked out on his first return. He gets past the 25, he gets a crease. And Lonnie Moore into James Madison territory, still going. Two big plays, two Monmouth touchdowns. The Hawks came to play today. <laughs> what a start in Harrisonburg. This is incredible. <laughs> 91 yards for Lonnie Moore. Well, kickoff coverage has absolutely plagued James Madison. And you can see bad coverage again. The crease, the wide openness for Lonnie Moore. And he doesn't really even get touched. One play offensively, 14 points for the Monmouth Hawks. Pass that chain around. Everybody gets a turn right now. Coach Signetti told us this week it starts with the kick. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to get the kick deep into the end zone to get the automatic touchback. But the kickoff coverage for James Madison has really been a problem that's plagued them the past three to four games. Well, they force a fumble on the first kickoff. On the second one, Lonnie Moore held onto the ball and went and adjusted 93 yards to the house. James Madison gets the ball back next. If you're late joining us, you have missed a whole heck of a lot already. Three big play scores. Monmouth, the latest, a 93-yard kick return, courtesy of Lonnie Moore, to go ahead 14-7 on the road. Brandon Polk had the touchdown catch and run for James Madison in between Monmouth's two big plays. You can't say there's a rhythm to this yet. As Matt Mosquera prepares to kick off for the second time. First one, and there's another fair catch. This is clearly signaled and caught at the 20, so there's no question about this one. But we go back to the Lonnie Moore return. This can't happen. No, and, and it starts with the short kick by Wise for James Madison. You'll see here, I mean, the kick doesn't really even get inside, barely gets inside the 10. That's just too short of a kick, and this is a problem that has hurt them the past couple weeks because now it gives Monmouth the opportunity to set up the wall and Lonnie Moore does the rest. And this is something they're well aware of. James Madison was in touch with his soccer team this week, which had already been eliminated from the NCAA tournament. Wanted to see if they could find a kickoff guy who could put the ball in the end zone. 
It doesn't appear they did, or if they did, they couldn't add him to the roster in time, but it's something they're well aware of, and it bites them right off the bat. And Monmouth limiting Jawan Hamilton to a gain of four on first down here. Well, I thought that's something that Monmouth was going to need coming in to upset James Madison. Some type of red zone turnover, some type of special teams turnover. You steal a possession. Uh, an unconventional way to get extra points on the board, and that's exactly what they did. And Danucci will throw on second down. Slings it out to Stapleton. Makes one man miss and has the first down. Shoved out at the 40. Second catch early for Riley Stapleton in a gain of 16. Yeah, Stapleton's just another big target that they love to put over the middle. And, uh, you know, he'll play slot receiver. He'll play a little bit of attached tight end. But Danucci now 5-for-5 five five to start the game. You know, this is a team that traditionally loves to run the football and play from, from ahead, but we're seeing here early on a, a different style of them playing from behind and have to throw the ball more. Danucci will throw on first down. He's 6-for-6 six six to start and a tackle in space, a critical one from Justin Terry to drag down Polk. Yeah, Justin Terry going to have his hands full, and this whole secondary from Monmouth is today because Brandon Polk now with his third catch. You saw earlier on the previous drive, super dynam dynamic, and Monmouth is playing them one-on-one -on -one outside right now. The give goes to Percy Ajay Obese, and he has the first down before he is stacked up. Never really brought down, but it will be a first down for the junior Percy Ajay Obese. He is the touchdown maker in this JMU backfield. Yeah, he is. What He's got three games coming into this season of over 100-plus yards, and, you know, he just runs bigger than he is. He'll run through you, and it's the yards after the contact that Monmouth is going to have to really gang tackle and rally to the ball to bring him down today. Monmouth has had two explosive plays to take the lead, but James Madison has been able to move the ball. Danucci wanted to go up top. Now he rolls. He's good with his feet, and he'll step forward for a gain into Monmouth territory. Well, Danucci's decision-making, specifically outside the pocket, has been something that's drastically improved this year. And that's a guy who, offensive player of the year in his conference, he's a two-year starter. That touchdown, the interception ratio, 22 to 4. You can see he gets flushed out of the pocket there and picks up five. His first incompletion of the day, he leads the FCS in completion percentage after he was second a year ago. But for Ben Danucci, the playoffs are a bit of a reminder of what went wrong last season. You said four interceptions this season. He threw five in their playoff loss last year to Colgate. And he said, it, it was tough on me. It's hard to throw five interceptions in Madden. <laughs> I did it in the yeah. playoffs on national TV. It's, it's been a tough one to live with. Yeah. But only four picks all season. He's made it a positive. On third down here. But Jay Obese has the carry, doesn't have a lot of room. It's going to be real close to that first down spot at the 39. I think he's short. This is a little bit too long for Ethan Ratke. I think James Madison's going to go for this. Yeah, they will. Uh, they've got a big offensive line, and, and this is the biggest offensive line in terms of size that Monmouth has seen all year. He's stacked up but falls forward and has the first down to Jay Obese, getting it done through the tackles. One of our impact players at Jay Obese and Daquan Grimes on the Monmouth side, the linebacker. Yeah, we talked about a Jay Obese and Daquan Grimes on the other side of the ball for Monmouth. First season injury free. It's been kind of a breakout year for him. Battled a lot of injuries leading up to this season, but that interior part of that defense going to have their hands full today in, in really making the right decisions in the run game to control this great offensive attack, specifically on the ground for James Madison. This is an official timeout. Both teams are treating it like it's a, a regular timeout. But they have uh, fixed the problem. I'm told the, the chains were broken or hadn't quite gotten set. So everybody, a quick chance to have a word with the bench. But it is first and ten for James Madison, steadily on the move and picking up third downs today in Monmouth territory. To 
Sanucci out of the reach of Polk. Flag on the play as Justin Terry chased him across the field. There's also a collision behind the play. And we had Kahari Scarlett of Monmouth involved. We had Liam Fornato, the offensive lineman of James Madison involved. That's interference. Defense, number 20. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I mean, at least from that angle, it didn't look like a pass interference. And a lot of times, you know, what, what is hard to see is this offhand of Justin Terry. And again, you know, I, I think that was a bit ticky-tack. And that's a quarterback saying that. James Madison up to the 35 with the first down. The give is Jawan Hamilton. Gets to the second level. He stood up there by Tyrese Wright. But a solid gain on first down for James Madison. Yeah, Juwan Hamilton, really this offensive line. I think that's the biggest challenge today for Monmouth is, you know, they just don't have the, the, the girth up front. They go 235 with Scarlett on the defensive line. They only average about 250. You know, can they get enough penetration against this big offensive line of James Madison? Tenth play of the drive, and Hamilton has the first down again. And this may be what we see today, the steady drive of James Madison against the potential for big plays on the Monmouth side. And J James Madison's going to run the ball about 60, 65% of the time. That, that's their bread and butter. But what will surprise you is how they kind of intermingle tempo with that. They've got this spread, op spread offense, up-tempo offense element to it. Uh, but the base roots of this are 12 personnel and 11 personnel. We're going to run it down your throat with multiple tight ends. Both teams among the rushing leaders in FCS. From the Monmouth 24. Now Jay Obese the back. Danucci keeps it. Trying to get the corner, and he does fall forward. It's right. The freshman out of Bridgeport, Connecticut on the tackle, but healthy pickup of eight for Danucci. Yeah, just when you think that the ball's going to get handed off to Hamilton inside, Danucci has the ability to get to the perimeter and do some special things with his legs. You ever throw five interceptions in a game? I did, actually. Uh, my senior year of high school, we got eliminated from the playoffs. Five interception game. What's the impact so, on you as a quarterback? Uh, you get scarred. I, I think you, you remember the five interception games more than you remember the five touchdown games. Got that one to a Jay Obese. You can see it took three Monmouth tacklers to bring him down. Daquan Grimes, one of those. As James Madison starts to get into what we call the high red zone, which is the 20-yard and in. Remember, this is the critical part within this game. If Monmouth is going to have a chance at an upset today, they have got to force the number one scoring offense, number two, excuse me, scoring offense in FCS and James Madison averaging 42 points a game. You've got to force them in the field goals. From the 13. And Jay Obese gets the carry. Gets inside the 10, but no further. And it was Dewan Cooper, the linebacker on the tackle. James Madison has been so superb all season long because, you know, they run the football so well in the run zone when in the red zone when areas get tight and confined. They still stick to the run game. As you say that, they find a Stapleton goal line. Touchdown, Riley Stapleton and JMU. Well, offensive coordinator Shane Montgomery knows he gets a loaded box. And again, the second touchdown pass of the day comes to an RPO perimeter throw, basically a bubble route on the perimeter to Stapleton. And as long as they get a heavy box, meaning eight, nine guys to stop the run. Danucci's going to keep throwing these perimeter bubble routes where he's got the numbers and allow his athletes to make plays in open space. And so far, so good because it's working. They'll check with Keith Zerbel, the replay official, on that spot. It looks like it was a close call as Stapleton extended the ball. With his knee coming down short of the goal line and the ball outstretched. Even if not, it's a first down and first and goal for James Madison. We'll see where the ball is and does, where his knee is, excuse me, and does the ball cross the plane at the same time. Hard to tell from that angle. 
You're looking for when his knee is down. I actually thought he was short in real time, but... After further review, the ruling on the field has changed. The runner was a half-yard line short of the touchdown. Wow. It'll be a first down and goal for James Madison. Tell you what, these replay officials must have much better eyes than I do because they're, they are looking at the same angles and the same cameras as we are. Now, we haven't seen this one yet, but I believe this is probably the one they were looking at. And, again, to me, I would think that the phrase they use is indisputable video evidence. You have to ask yourself, is that enough evidence to overturn the call on the field? James Madison first in goal from the one of Jay Obese. Trying to pull the pile forward. He did cross the plane. It is a James Madison touchdown. Not quite as climactic as the Stapleton score that didn't stand. But effective nonetheless, and James Madison with the extra point can tie the score. Having controlled the ball just about the entire game. Yeah, they're just going to run inside zone to the left, and it starts with the push up front. And then Obase, 200 plus pounds, just kind of carries two Monmouth defenders in for a touchdown. How about time of possession? James Madison, eight minutes, eight seconds. Monmouth, 36 seconds. Scoreboard, 14-14. Monmouth gets the ball back. Uh, don't blink, you might miss something. 14-14 right now. ESPN's coverage of the FCS Championship continues next weekend. Corner final games, ESPN, ESPN2, and right here, ESPN3. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. What a start to this one. Percy J. Obese into the end zone for the tying touchdown. Monmouth has only run one offensive play. They fumbled the opening kickoff, then ran 93 and a half yards for a touchdown. Then return the next kickoff for a score. And so this time they do the short kickoff, they get the fair catch called, and the Hawks will start at the 25. I think they're willing to uh, forfeit up 20 yards of field position. They don't have a lot of confidence right now in their kicker wise kicking out of the back of the end zone, so I'd look for them to start going to more of the pooch kick. So will we actually see Kenji Bahar in the Monmouth offense here? Again, they've just run one play. We talk about Guerrero, he's leading the country in rushing, he's nearing 2,000 yards. Kenji Bahar is the player of the year in the Big South on the offensive side. He's been fantastic. Yeah, three-and-a-half-year starter. Really the pulse of this team. And uh, he's a fifth-year senior. Decision-making is great. Completion percentage. He's got a, 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 a big opportunity today against a great defense in the FCS. He'll throw on first down. Going up top, there was a lot of contact, and the flag flies right off the bat. Holding against an eligible receiver. Defense, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Look on the right side of your screen for this hold, or the top, yeah. I beg your pardon. Hold, it's a tackle at the line of scrimmage is really what it is. I'll call that all day. Rashad Robinson flagged for it. First down for Monmouth. Only their second ever appearance in the FCS playoffs. Two years ago, they went on the road to Northern Iowa and got smacked. And Bahar had a tough day throwing interceptions. He overshoots. Terrence Green there looking for a similar play that netted the penalty. Second and ten. And I thought coming into the game that Monmouth was going to try to attack James Madison in the secondary. And what we've seen is the first two plays on this drive, they're doing that through the air. Mom, or excuse me, James Madison, very good, almost first in every statistical defensive category. But in the pass defense, they're a little weaker. Bahar on second down, out route too far for more, and he's been erratic with his throws early. I mean, it can't be easy, Hudson. You're expecting to come out as a quarterback. He spends 20, 25 minutes on the sideline. Well, this is a kid also, while a three-year starter has a lot of reps, it's a different moment, right? You're on the road uh, against a high-powered, big-name James Madison. There's nerves. Uh, there's anxiousness, and I thought that's what you saw on, on that play right there as he had more running wide open on an out route. He just kind of threw off his back foot instead of stepping into it and throwing it accurately. 
We haven't even talked about James Madison's defensive line. They're tremendous. Five and seven. The edge rushers are outstanding. They get pressure, and he overthrows again. He was taken down with the pressure coming from Mike Green up the middle. Rondell Carter on the outside, and it's a three and out after the penalty for Monmouth. Something you got to do defensively against Bahar is change up the post-snap look. you, you got to show something pre-snap, but then when Bahar catches the ball and looks back up to assess the secondary, you got to rotate your safeties. you got to you got to bring guys from depth, and, and that's exactly what James Madison did there, right there. Defensive coordinator Corey Hefman changing the post-snap look up and confusing a veteran quarterback in Ch Kenji Bahar. Ryan Cost took over as the punter mid-season. Had one blocked, and he took a long time to get that away. It's blocked again. Squibs across midfield before it's collected. But James Madison picking up momentum here in the first quarter. Holy Cross got pressure in the backfield, and the high snap slowed him down even yeah. more. Uh, I believe this is number seven, Jawan Hamilton, right there, that just fights through. The wall of the Monmouth punt team. That's Daka. He's the defensive seven. And James Madison is set up. They moved the ball well today, starting from their own 49. Danucci all day to throw and find Brandon Polk for a first down into Monmouth territory. This is what defense coordinator Andy Bobick was concerned about, giving Danucci multiple what I call Mississippis in the pocket to go through his progression. Started on the right side of the field, didn't like Stapleton on the out route, came all the way to the back side of his third progression, threw a nice ball. Jay Obese gets the corner, has the first down, and is near the 20 with a big carry. We're starting to see what the JMU offense can do. Yeah, and you're starting to see once they mix tempo how dangerous they can be. They start with a pass on first down. Now they come back up and get into their tempo run. And look at the left side of that offensive line for James Madison just creating a wall. Great job by left tackle there, Gillespie kicking out. After a gain of 13 and a gain of 17, Danucci is stopped for just a two-yard pickup here. And Monmouth had those two big plays, as good a start as you can ask for, but other than that, it's been bad news for him so far. Yeah, defense has now been on the field for the third time, and we're not even you know, done with the first quarter yet. And long drives, too. A lot of clock and a lot of plays every time James Madison has the ball. Danucci corner looking for Stapleton. Some contact there, but incomplete. Coverage provided by... Time here, Barry. Stapleton, because of his size at 6'5", is Danucci's favorite red zone target, and rightfully so. You know, you don't have to be extremely accurate when you've got a guy like Stapleton with a big catch radius, but just throws it outside the stretch reach there of Stapleton. So third and eight, critical one here. Nucci just slings it down low for Brown. He's going to the corner. Jake Brown has a JMU touchdown. They convert and then some to take the lead. Again, I'll highlight the pass protection. Look at this pocket by the offensive line. The sidearm changed the arm angle for Danucci. A nice, sweet delivery. Second touchdown of the year for Jake Brown, the redshirt junior. And you're seeing the depth with which James Madison has been blowing away CAA opposition for the last six weeks and then some. The three drives, three touchdowns for James Madison. They have looked every bit the favorite as we go back to the Brown catch. Well, again, this is this is a pass rush issue. You've getting four guys to the quarterback, and for the second time on this drive, Danucci's able to go through all the way to his third progression. 
And, and you know, Bobick, the defensive coordinator for Monmouth, is going to have to start bringing extra guys because the three down and four down pressures of the defensive line just aren't getting the job done. And, and, and pass rush is a, is a team thing. You know, you've got to have good coverage in the secondary, but you also got to get guys that get to the quarterback. Now the 15th annual ACC championship game tonight, number three Clemson, number 23 Virginia from Charlotte. Tigers have won the last four ACC titles, of course, they're big favorites. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Conference championships going on around the FBS today. This is the first of eight playoff games in the FCS. And we see the eight national seeds hosting. James Madison got a shot to the mouth from Monmouth early, but has responded in kind. And Camden Wise to kick off. Remember, this has been an area of concern. We'll see if this is another short, high one trying to force a fair catch. Nope, Monmouth was expecting that, so instead Wise reaches the end zone. Here you see the top half of the bracket. All these games get underway later today. Austin P and Sacramento State both in their first appearance. But of course, North Dakota State has won seven out of eight titles. The only team that has beaten them, JMU yep. in the Fargo Dome in 2016. Remember, this is a JMU team that lost early last year in the FCS playoffs. And this, uh, this team remembers that. Beat Delaware last year, didn't get a seed, and then went on the road and lost at Colgate. The Monmouth did not look comfortable in its last series, didn't get Guerrero a touch, and he's locked up right away by Mike Green in the backfield. Green playing a bigger role in this first half with Adib Atarawa suspended due to a targeting call, and Green made a big tackle. Well, you see why they're number one in the FCS in rushing defense. Green just going to shed his blocker right here and make the tackle for almost a tackle for a loss. They're going to call it second and ten. It's really the strength of this JMU defense is being able to get pressure in the run game with four defensive linemen, four down linemen. Green and Garrett Gruel are in the middle. Again, the headliners are outside. It's a good hold by the tight end, Sean Clark. He was hit right as he caught it. It'll bring up third and five for Monmouth. And again, Hudson, they need a first down here. They need to give that defense a breather. Yeah, they sure do. You can't afford to put your tired defense back out on the field against a James Madison offense that's just really beating them down in the trenches right now. This is a crucial third down conversion. And they'd love to find Lonnie Moore, the 5'10 junior, who is now lined up in the slot. Bahar rolls that way. And with a high reach, Zach Treadway pulls in the first down catch. The sophomore from the Chamonix High School in Pennsylvania. Gain of 18. Well, they're going to move the pocket here and change the launch angle of the pocket. They're going to roll out the quarterback. And Zach Treadway starts on the outside alignment and releases inside. It's a great design to get the outside alignment of the receiver to release inside, basically change responsibility with the inside slot receiver and convert on a big third down. It's just the eighth play for Monmouth as opposed to 25 for James Madison. It's Guerrero makes one man miss and falls toward midfield with a healthy pickup. John Daka, who had the blocked punt earlier, who's celebrating his birthday today, in on the tackle. But it is a good gain of six. It'll bring up second and four for Monmouth. You know, Daka and Carter, what a combination along the defensive line for JMU. 43 TFLs combined, 22 sacks between those guys. They do give it to Guerrero again. We expect a steady diet of him. More than 30 carries against Holy Cross. And he's near the first down marker. MJ Hampton on the stop. And Guerrero will take a play off here. That's a rarity. And it's Romeo Holden checking in for him. And one of the linemen, Mo Shabana, shaken up for Monmouth. And they really can't afford any more absences on that offensive line. Already a couple of their depth pieces, Tyler Williams and Charles James, not fully available today. Back up left tackle, Oliver Jervis is actually a former quarterback in high school. Yeah. 
It'll be interesting to see how they decide to make substitutions and rotations now because, like you said, they are very thin along that offensive line with depth. I mean, this is the one spot where they have the guy in Jervis who's played a lot this year at that spot. But this is a game where we expect James Madison to wear Monmouth down, and this is part of it. See Shabana right there. Hard to see his jersey number, number 70, but a little bit of friendly fire gets rolled up on by Guerrero. And the good news for Monmouth is it gives everybody, including their defense, yeah. a little bit more time. We had a fast start to this one. Monmouth scoring on its first play from scrimmage, scoring on its second kick return of the game. But James Madison has answered and gone ahead, scoring each time its offense has had the ball three for three. And they're going to measure as well. It is really close, just short, so third and inches coming for the Hawks. There's Kevin Callahan. He started this Monmouth program, their first season, 1993, down on the Jersey Shore. Began in the NEC, began non-scholarship, and over the years have worked into the upper echelons, moving to the Big South men, committing, going to the full FCS scholarship limit. And this is their first, one of their first real classes that has had the full scholarship allotment. And they think there's a lot of room to grow if they can build on this success. Three straight seasons with at least eight wins. And this year, their first Big South title. Beat Kennesaw State to do it. Right here, third and short. Falling forward, and they do pick up the first down with Isaiah Bishop getting the carry. He's listed as a linebacker, but we were told he might see some short yardage duty. Yeah, they love to bring him in on short yardage, kind of a bigger tailback that they utilize in some of the fullback short yardage situations there. And quite frankly, if they didn't get it, I believe they would have gone for it on fourth down anyways. I hope so. I think you'll see them maybe in some fourth and shorts here early in the game go for it. They really believe that, you know, they're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive in going for some of these fourth downs to get points and touchdowns instead of field goals. They do not believe that kicking field goals is going to result in a win. Guerrero, the nation's leading rusher, is back in the game behind Kenji Bahar on first and ten. And Guerrero dives forward for a pickup of four. It's really amazing when you talk about the combined production between Bahar and Guerrero. I mean, you've got a guy in 3,500 yards passing in Bahar, but then Guerrero, as you see our impact players, over 2,000, almost 2,000 yards rushing, eclipsing that today. And then Rondell Carter, a guy who got invited to the NFL PA Bowl, Senior Bowl, last week, 22 TFL, second in FCS. Quick throw finds Lonnie Moore. He made one man miss, and he has the first down past the 30-yard line. You know, Lonnie Moore had one of their play and a half tackles for loss on the season, which is just absolutely unbelievable. What a first quarter we've had. If you like offense, you've come to the right place. If you like James Madison execution, you've come to the right place. It's the Dukes 21, the Monmouth Hawks 14. Three quarters still to go. Back from Harrisonburg after this. Getting ready to start the second quarter, Bridgeforth Stadium in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Average better than 22,000 in crowd, number three in the country here this season for the number two team in the country, James Madison, out to a 21-14 lead on Monmouth. The Hawks driving, 10th play of the drive after they had not been able to sustain one earlier. Bahar under some pressure looking for Green, a lot of hand fighting. Green brought it in, he's out of bounds at the one. Monmouth not going quietly here in the first half. This is a great job of legally using your arms and body leverage to create just a little bit more separation for Green. 
Bahar drops an absolute dime right into the bucket. And look how he, he Green kind of uses his body to just create a little more separation so the ball can be put off the outside shoulder. And I know James Madison fans are saying that was a push-off. But I disagree. I think legally he didn't extend all the way with his arms. He was able to create just enough separation. Guerrero getting set to take a direct snap. And... Previous play is under further review. We get a late decision to review that catch. Did you see anything there that made you hesitate? No, I didn't. I'd have to see the replay on it. I mean, we know you don't always see eye to eye with the replay officials. Well, but look, I, I think I'm about 0 for 30 this year <laughs> on uh, gauging whether or not it's going to be overturned or not. But He's Hudson Mason, former Georgia quarterback, not a replay official. He's got the ball. Are they replaying if it was a touchdown? Yeah, they're definitely replaying whether or not uh, it's going to be at the one or at the touchdown. He didn't really touchdown. hold the ball out. We'll see this angle here. This would be the best one if the ref would get out of the way. <laughs> Hard to tell again from that one. This one, no ref should be better. The ball crossed the plane. His knee hits it. His ball. He hit the pylon, question, to be he, honest. He hits the pylon. Right? He's, he's be, not down yet. Yeah, he the hits the pylon. Be, uh, is that... That's a touchdown, right? Yeah, is the, is the leg out of bounds. I think his left foot was in bounds as the ball crossed the plane. I believe that's a touchdown. You know, the only thing that would overturn this, or excuse me, keep it as it stands, which is the ball's at the one-yard line, is if that right foot was out of bounds as the ball crossed the plane, but I didn't see that. So again, David Sewer, the referee, is talking upstairs to the replay official, Keith Zerbel. You don't watch that left foot. Okay, that's in bounds right there, and the ball looks to me like it's crossed the plane. That that should be a touchdown. Yeah, left foot in, ball crosses. And his knee hits the pylon yeah. before the foot touches, but that may be what they're checking. The left knee hits the pylon while the right foot is about to touch out of bounds. Right, but it's not out of bounds. I mean, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, the right knee's not touching. So for once, you and I agree. Yeah, we're like a married couple. It, it doesn't happen often. Either way, again, the other result would be Monmouth set up first and goal at the one. Oh. And th they needed this drive in the worst way. You know, James Madison, really both teams are starting to commit more numbers to the box to stop the run. And what that does is that leaves, you know, advantageous numbers outside to throw the ball in Bahar. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed to a touchdown. Police set the game clock to 14. 54. 14 minutes, 54 seconds. You know, and give credit to Terrence Green as well for the way he ran his route. But you can see again, left foot in as the ball crosses the plane. Also, simultaneously, that right foot was hovering over out of bounds but was not down on the ground. Touchdown, Monmouth. Kenji Bahar was 3 of 6 for 31 yards in the first quarter. That scoring play, 32 yards. And it could tie the game if Matt Mosquera can convert. He does. And Monmouth is hanging around. 21-21, just getting started here. More offense to come. JMU gets the ball back. 21 all with Monmouth right now. Gorgeous afternoon for playoff football in the hills of Virginia. James Madison and Monmouth, Monmouth locked up 21-21. We've just gotten started in the second quarter. Kickoff guys are getting a workout today as Matt Mosquera prepares to kick it away to D'Angelo Amos, one of the top return men in the country, and Brandon Polk. Monmouth trying to avoid a return. If they let that go, it might go out of bounds. What are they doing? Why would you toe tap to keep a kickoff in bounds? It's a lineman, man. <laughs> Give him a break. Someone behind him's got to say, "Let it go." It's going out of bounds. Spot is at the 25. James Madison has had three possessions on offense. All three of them have gone the distance. Ben DiNucci has led the way and been nearly flawless. 9 of 11 for 129 yards and two scores. Juwan Hamilton with him. DiNucci keeps it one-on-one -on -one against Powell. He's going to burn him easily and turn it upfield. 
Ben DiNucci crosses midfield with a big gainer. Evan Powell got broken down off the ball. Well, again, Ben DiNucci is going to read the defensive end right here, number nine for Monmouth, and he crashes so hard he doesn't even know that Ben DiNucci pulled it and is out the back door, and he is athletic enough to make you miss in space. Evan Powell's yet another one of those high school quarterbacks who also played linebacker and just was caught flat-footed there. Yeah, you really got to make sure Massey or Monmouth, that defensive end, that that ball is handed off. Hamilton the tailback again. Danucci gives to him this time. Hamilton got past Powell and he's finally dragged down by Dewan Cooper, but he's moved the sticks again. They can't stop JMU at the moment. No, and they're just getting so much push up front by this offensive line. They're just wearing down the box of Monmouth. And the beauty of it is, is they're rotating a couple backs. There you saw Jawan Hamilton. Sometimes it's Ajay Obase. I mean, they keep fresh legs in there. And for a moment, defense that's been on the field a lot in the first half, they're wearing down. Where is the defense? Both teams are averaging around 10 yards a play. Hamilton turning it upfield, trying to spin away from one, and Powell won't let him go. Slings him down, but forward progress means a gain of four for Jawan Hamilton. Those two inside linebackers, Powell and Grimes for Monmouth, I mean, you know, Coach Bobic, defense coordinator, talked high about those guys. You know, these guys have been playing great football the last five games. You know, but it's tough as a middle linebacker when you're, when you're into your defensive line, doesn't beat double teams for you to soak up and run free and make tackles. Now keep it on the ground. Hamilton bounces it, has a block, and is knocked out of bounds. Just shy of the 15, it's another first down, but there is a flag. Looks like it's against Monmouth, and James Madison will stay on the move. So Monmouth is really struggling. Offside, defense, number eight. That penalty is declined. It's enough for a first down. Really struggling getting a hat, a helmet in every gap, and there again you saw Massey lose contain. And as a defensive end, we saw him screen down the line of scrimmage on the first play of the drive when Danucci pulled it. That time he loses contain, and it's a big run to the perimeter. Hamilton up to 48 yards. He's out, and Ajay Obase is in. He breaks one tackle. And Dewan Cooper let him go, and Ajay Obase goes inside the 10. Eight-yard pickup for the junior. There's an example of how Ojibese just runs bigger than really what is his body may show you. Only at 205 pounds. James Madison going tempo, and O.J. Obese looks like he's just shy of the first down marker. He'll bring up third and short. Kind of got some of those big back traits in a small back body. Percy A.J. Obese didn't play football until high school. Played soccer, that's part of his Ghanaian heritage, as you see the rushing yards racking up quickly, but a beast in the weight room. Squats, uh, oh, 600 pounds. Mm. Yeah. He's the back on third and short. Danucci keeps it wide open. He'll walk in. Ben Danucci strolling into the end zone. James Madison cruises downfield to retake the lead. We'll see again a defensive end for Monmouth right here, screeching down. And Danucci reached the shoulders of the defensive end for Monmouth, Solomon Manning. You have to make sure if you're the end man on the line of scrimmage, that's the second time on that drive, that they don't make sure that the ball is handed off. You're responsible for the quarterback. You said hold him to field goals. Four drives, four touchdowns for James Madison. Offensively, the Dukes looking every bit the favorite. They're out in front 28-21, and this is a quarterback's dream, right? Yep. Danucci, second play of the drive. He's just reading that defensive end. This time Manning screams down. Danucci says, couldn't come any easier.
James Madison rolling offensively, four drives, four touchdowns. And on the last one, Hudson, they didn't even throw the ball. No, they didn't. It was really the, the zone reads right there. Massey, the defensive end from Monmouth, doesn't make sure the ball's handed off, and Danucci kills you with his legs. James Madison continues to rotate, running backs in, and this was the touchdown. Danucci just walks in. Monmouth has to make sure from their defensive ends going forward that the ball is handed off on the zone reads. A chance to return the kickoff. Lonnie Moore gets out past the 30 before he's finally dragged down. So again, good field position for Monmouth. Not as good as James Madison has had, but significant. Bryce McGinley on the tackle. And now we see what Monmouth can do, because aside from the Guerrero 93-yard run, as it was officially credited, Monmouth has just 12 rushing yards, and they've stopped Guerrero to five carries, 10 yards. And that's going to be forced to, on the right arm, right arm of Bahar again. Made a great throw to Green in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but they're going to have to throw the ball in tight spaces. He gives to Guerrero running laterally, and he's never able to turn it up. It's another tackle for loss. Green, one of the defenders there in the backfield, along with Dimitri Holloway, the linebacker. I really thought besides the first play of the game that James Madison gave up a 93-yard touchdown, they've, they've kind of settled in. They, they, they responded nicely, and for the number one rush defense in the country, kind of responded the right way and have really controlled the rest of this moment rushing attack moving forward. They should be fresh. They've only been on the field for six minutes. Bahar overthrew that again. It's deflected and almost intercepted. Wesley McCormick on the coverage. He looked like he was throwing it to McCormick rather than his receiver. Well, he did a great job of not panicking, not getting a pass interference call or yanking a jersey or anything. But then he does a fantastic job of turning, finding the ball, and he even tries to tip it back into the middle of the field to a safety. His cohort almost comes running over and almost gets the interception. So third and ten, and again, Monmouth needs to stay on the field. Yeah, and you see these drives, 83 yards, 10 yards, 75 yards. One came with a special team's kick return for a touchdown. They are 14th in the country and 45% conversion rate on third down. Timeout, Monmouth. It's first of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So Monmouth takes its first timeout. We'll take it with them and come back. A critical third and ten coming for the Hawks here in the second quarter. We're still early in the second quarter. 11.03 to play. James Madison leading Monmouth 28-21 to as we kick off round two of the FCS championships. Monmouth has had two big plays for scores. They've been struggling since. Great on the season. Dominated the Big South, including a good Kennesaw State team. But James Madison's defense is of a different ilk, and it has really put Kenji Bahar and the Hawks under pressure and off schedule, facing third and ten here. Blitz coming. Bahar can't pick it up, and he's sacked. First time today. Rondell Carter, of course. Well, Rondell Carter is going to get credit for the sack. Ten and a half sacks now on the season, but it's really great disguise in the secondary by Adam Smith and D'Angelo Amos really holding their water. They showed pressure from the field and brought it to the boundary. Bahar had no idea where to go with the football. Remember, Daka got a piece of the first kick. Cost gets this one away. Amos will take it at the 35. Beats the first man, runs through his own guy, and gets forward to about the 43-yard line. 38-yard punt and a return of seven for Amos. Now, of course, tomorrow, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups for the Peach Bowl, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, Saturday, December 28th for those games. Reese and the guys will unveil the New Year's Six Bowl games and, of course, the final top 25 
four-hour special tomorrow starting at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Four-hour special may be what we're talking about right here. Hmm. Special, like, special display of James Madison's offense so far. Feels like a Pac-12 game, doesn't it? That's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> Jawan Hamilton almost got outside. He broke the arm tackle of Tymere Berry and stumbled to the turf for a gain of three. Well, this is a huge drive, really, for both teams. Mom, if you want to keep this game in a one possession heading into halftime, and if you're James Madison, a great opportunity to kind of step on the throat of Monmouth. Pump and go route, but Polk was covered. Well defended by Monmouth. Danucci extending, settling in, throwing, and connecting. It was Hamilton out of the backfield who hauled that one in. 18-yard pickup and a first down. Well, he's already got all protection today because of a great offensive line. But then when he starts ad-libbing like this, I mean, this is Johnny Manziel-esque. Just going around in the pocket. Looking for guys to get open. I mean, he creates an extra eight to nine seconds. And how that wear down, wears down a secondary in the defense, you got to cover so much longer. I'd say they handle the first moves really well. Now Danucci is pressured, evades two, and manages to gain yardage before Dewan Cooper tackles him. He's working his way into your into your cold quarterback heart, isn't he? You know, I, I tell you what, just the way he kind of plays backyard football in the pocket. I mean, he plays very freely. It's it's very Patrick Mahomes-esque. We've already seen him change his, his arm angle today on one touchdown, throw a little sidearm uh, ball, and then the way he just kind of escapes out of the pocket with his eyes downfield and kind of just kills you looking to throw. Timeout, James Madison. It's first of the half. Be a 30-second timeout. We'll break with James Madison. Up seven with the ball and on the move. Back in a minute. Back at Bridgeforth Stadium at James Madison University. Number two team in the country trying to start off its playoff trip. They need three wins to get to Frisco, Texas in the national championship game. Second and seven here, trying to extend the lead to two scores for the first time today. Tanucci keeps and is driven down after a short game. A little extra there. Matt Castronova gave him an extra shove. Talk about dominance. No problem for the Duke's offense. When I talked about it at the beginning, touchdown, 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 four drives resulting in seven points. Monmouth is just not being resistant enough, not presiding, pr providing any type of restraint in the red zone to force field goals. Defensive line has really not been able to create much of a push against the run or the pass. On third down, Danucci checks down to a run. Evan Powell holding him. Daquan grinds and he shoved forward. He lost the football. They're calling him down with the first down after some serious help from the offensive line. Well, I thought Powell had him tackled for, uh, for a stop. Ruling on the field was a runner was down prior to the fumble. Liam for, for a first down. Liam Fornado, the right tackle, gave him a yeah. big shove gave to get there. A big extra push. Powell, the linebacker, you can see number five here, kind of rats some spies. And, and makes the, almost makes the tackle. It's going to be about a yard short until Liam Fornado, the right tackle, comes in and gives him an extra push for the first down. Jay Obese went to ground, no whistle, and so he gets a little extra contact, but it's a short pickup. James Madison, every time it's been close, they're four or five for th on third downs. And the one time they didn't get it on third down, they went for it on fourth and got it. Well, this team becomes virtually impossible to beat when you don't get them off the field on third down and you don't force field goals in the red zone. Second in the FCS and red zone conversion, 94% touchdown rate. Jay Obese locked up short, and this is going to bring up a third and about seven for James Madison. Another opportunity for Monmouth to force a field goal. Well, last time they emptied the back out and, and tried to run a design QB draw with Danucci, but we've seen them go to many different players on third down. In the first quarter, it was Dylan Stapleton. One-on-one, -on -one. he's aligned to your top of your screen, number 10 right now. 
at third and seven. I'd expect them, to, if they get one-on-one -on -one to Stapleton at 6-5, maybe throw him a fade ball. They're going to get one-on-one. -on -one. Safety's rolling to the middle of the field. He's looking at Riley Stapleton. Comeback route. That looked like it bounced. Incomplete. Rare misfire from Danucci. And newsflash, Monmouth's defense <laughs> yeah. holds. Yeah, newsflash, Danucci is human. Throws the ball, kind of skips it a little bit. And you can see by his body language right there, he knows he missed that one. He's been really efficient today. And he, Stapleton runs a great route, kind of runs like a 10-yard stop route and has enough separation if he just gets the ball up a little bit. And credit Stapleton, he almost gets his hands underneath it, even though it was a bad ball. It's not quite enough. 39-yard attempt for Ethan Radke, James Madison's all-time leading scorer. Should be automatic from that range on this day, and he just cleared the uprights. He actually ran into a little bit of wind going against him, but it's good. And James Madison extends his lead to 10 points, 31-21. Still, though, Slight momentum gain for Monmouth, you know, I mean, they're looking for things to build on on that sideline. No, it is, and, and I think that's a moral victory, and I know in football you're not into moral victories, but for the first time all day, you force a field goal, and now it's a 10-point game instead of 14, and while it's still a two-possession ball game, and this drive's going to be huge heading into first ha uh, the first halftime, you still feel like, okay, we can work off of that. We finally got to stop. Now, later tonight, the 15th annual ACC championship game, number three, Clemson, and number 23, Virginia, from Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Tigers looking to secure another berth in the college football playoff, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Top eight in action today. Well, I beg your pardon. Utah lost last night. That was a rough one. And Oklahoma and Baylor tied 13 all right now. Some of the big ones coming up later tonight as well. Obviously, if Georgia wins today in the SEC championship, that will uh, that will put two teams in. Oh, are we talking about Georgia? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm also talking about the Big 12 because I think winner of that Big 12 championship, if Georgia loses, is going to be that fourth team in. I don't like the fair catch, man. Someone, I want someone to come up and return that if you're Monmouth trying to get back in this game. Well, a lot of times, you know, those guys that are kind of in the second tier of the kickoff return unit, those guys that are fair catching it, they're linemen. You know, I, they're I know. Back. They're guys that aren't used to carrying or catching a ball and running with it. So I think the coaches say just fair catch it and we'll take it at the 25. The one time they tried to move the return men up, Camden Wise was actually able to outkick them. So Monmouth starts at its own 25. They've only run 17 plays today to James Madison's 40. And they've been averaging less than four yards a play since the opening run by Guerrero, who is snowed under in the backfield. Never got started. John Daka, number seven, letting them know about it. So twitchy is Daka, and I think that's the best way to describe him. Buck Buchanan, award finalist. You can see him here, just boom. Not, only, not even shed the tackler, just run through the fullback to make the tackle. Quentin Parham, the tight end, got worked over. Guerrero's rushing totals going backward now, and Bahar and Terrence Moore not on the same page. He's telling him, I checked. He's telling him, I did this. Terrence Green, I beg your pardon. And Green missed the checkoff, and so it's third and long. And they said two years ago when they lost to Northern Iowa, Bahar got frustrated. The body language was not great as they played from behind in that one. And he's trying to get this offense going once again, this time quickly because the coverage wasn't set. He throws that way and it's tipped away. MJ Hampton got over there, may have been tipped at the line as well. Well, he's trying to throw an out route to Lonnie Moore and it's just double covered. And I'm not for sure even if Hampton had tipped the ball if it would have been complete. It, it just, the road doesn't really anything over there. And, you know, you're, you're in third and long now for the second straight drive against James Madison defense. They do such a good job of disguising their coverage. They've really kind of gotten into the mind of Kenny Bahar. Kenji, excuse me. Third time in four possessions, Monmouth forced to punt. Cost off the side of his foot. Gets a really good bounce, though. And finally collected at the 33, 39 yards on the punt in the end with no return. And so Monmouth has 
Five and a half minutes to hold out here against James Madison, which they've barely been able to contain. That defense has to be exhausted. Here's our half of the bracket. South Dakota State and Northern Iowa are underway in Brookings, South Dakota. 10-0 lead there for the Jackrabbits. James Madison beat him a couple of years ago en route to the title game. Talk about a cushion. Stapleton had all day to line that one up. Gain of 13. Riley Stapleton has been the go-to receiver today. Suspended for the first three games of the year for an off-field incident that, a uh, legal incident that did not reflect well on him, but he has been a big part of the offense since coming back. Off play action. Danucci has time. Finally got hurried just a little bit as he let the ball go and it sailed high. Yeah, really the first time all day mom has been able to get any type of internal pressure. This time Nick Shoemaker, number 99, forces Danucci to just throw a ball a little high over the middle. But you can see Danucci really clean pocket. Just kind of has to throw it a little bit sidearm to get it away, and it sails on him. Monmouth hanging around in the game, but since the kickoff return by Lonnie Moore, it has been one-way traffic for the most part. Dumping it down. This is Dylan Stapleton. He's got a first down and is finally pushed out at the 23. 26-yard pickup. I mean, these are big chunks the Dukes are getting. Yeah, Division II transfer Dylan Stapleton. Look how quick Danucci goes through his progression. He gets all the way from the right side all the way to the back side in a, minute, in a matter of a half a second. I think that just speaks to the way he processes information and what he's able to do with his mind pre-snap. Began at Slippery Rock, younger brother Dylan. The give is to Jawan Hamilton, and he's locked up for a loss. Evan Powell, one of those in there, and a little bit of extra pushing. Anthony Budd involved as well, and a flag does fly. We'll see against which team it goes. I think it's going to be on Jawan Hamilton, running back for James Madison, the, the head official standing there watching all of it. And it's always the second guy who gets caught. It's been a relatively clean game in terms of penalties. Juan kind of threw what looked like a little bit of a slap or punch, and a flag wasn't thrown. A flag was actually thrown much later. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number seven hits first. 15-yard penalty. Be second down. Second penalty against James Madison and a costly one. You know, nothing more than just playing through the whistle there. Typical football chirp, couple pushing going around. You missed the, we missed the push right there by Jawan, but I saw, I mean, a flag wasn't thrown immediately. Maybe an unsportsmanlike conduct from some type of verbiage that was exchanged, but, you know, that's just dumb because you've got Monmouth on the ropes, you've got a 10-point lead, and now you get a 15-yard penalty for no reason. So it was a loss on the play, plus a 15-yard penalty. Brings up second and 26. As we go under four minutes in this first half, big plays on each side, but James Madison has been taking over. We'll see if they can keep it going. Solomon Van Horse, his first carry. It'll be a short pickup, though, third and very long coming. Here's Kurt Signetti, son of a coach. Last two years at Elon, where he continued that program's growth. Beat James Madison here in CAA play last year. And now the head coach of the Dukes taking over for Mike Houston, who this time a year ago was engaged in all sorts of discussions with a couple of schools that really seemed to distract James Madison from that playoff loss at Colgate. Place deathly quiet on third and 23. Stapleton the target and he's hauled down, but they get into field goal range on the delivery. Eddie Morales pulling Riley Stapleton to the ground. 
Well, it's going to be enough yardage to probably get a field goal out of it. But a great job by Danucci of stepping up in the pocket. You don't get the first down. It'll be interesting to see here if they decide to go for it on fourth or kick the field goal, and they're keeping their offense out on the field. I think that's the right decision. You saw on the last field goal that barely skimmed by at about 35, 40 yards. One for one today on fourth down, eight for ten on the season. Danucci gets pressure, has to get it away, and has the first down catch made. Devin Ravenel, only his 11th catch of the year. It's a big one. Well, they're going to motion in Ravenel to give him the advantage based on alignment. Great job by the running back and offensive line picking up the blitz. And Monmouth is just too soft in the secondary. Way too much cushion on a fourth and predictable passing situation. Offensive line again trying to push the pile forward. They're going to mark him short. And it was Percy and Jay Obese on the carry again. 95 is Adam Kakar. Senior in the middle of that line. Second and goal at the one. And Jay Obese dives forward for the score. James Madison starting to pull away late in the first half. You'll see here they get in a heavy personnel set. The fullback number five, that's Rondell Carter, defensive end. He gets the kick out block and a huge touchdown and a momentum shift for James Madison as now they go up by three possessions. That fourth down conversion was huge and really kind of stuck a knife in the heart of Monmouth. And James Madison gets the ball to start the second half. So they've had six possessions, scored on all six, five of those touchdowns. And they are up 17 here, showing exactly why they are such heavy favorites to reach Frisco, Texas, and the national championship game. 62 yards on this scoring drive, over eight plays. And they had some long yardage situations they yeah. picked up. And it starts with the pass protection. Look at all these clean pockets that allowed Danucci to distribute the football. I mean, that's the only play on fourth and four right there that he had any type of Monmouth player right in his grill. And then they finish it off with a heavy goal line set where they bring in Rondell Carter to be the lead blocker. See the play selection here, so balanced, really. I mean, efficiency. Passing and running the football, 18 to 31 is how they're dispersing it. 220 yards passing for Danucci in the first half, and that's not even really, you know, without talking about what he's done with his legs on some of the quarterback redesigned runs. 383 yards of offense in the first half, and James Madison has had the ball for 20 and a half minutes. Monmouth's only had it for eight, and they really have not been able to sustain anything aside from. The touchdown drive that culminated in the brown or green TD grab. You know, Danucci came in completing 70% of his passes, which leads FCS. He's completing 77% of his passes today. Is that good? So far. Yeah, that, that's not bad. And, and when you got a quarterback that that's, is that lethal with his accuracy, the only way to disrupt that is to hit him time and time again, and Monmouth hasn't done that enough. Four receivers to the bottom of the picture. James Madison was late to cover it, but they do. Guerrero, one of them, thought they might start to go screen. As they have to play hurry up. They, they usually play with a good tempo on this offense. Hopefully you can get at least get a field goal out of this with a, a minute 19 remaining in two timeouts. You get into your two-minute up-tempo hurry offense. It is imperative that they try to get some points out of this drive before half. They got to go faster than this. Empty backfield, Bahar to throw, has Terrence Green. He needs to get out of bounds, he does, and then he's thrown down, might be a flag, it is. And that's gonna push Monmouth into James Madison territory. Is that Charles Tut 
drawing the laundry on the field. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense number 23, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, it was Charles Tut flagged for it. So fighting, 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 trying to get out of bounds is green, and that's going to get called every time. You have to have some awareness when he gets out of bounds there to just pull up. You can't throw the guy to the ground two or three yards out of bounds. So Monmouth at the James Madison 47 trying to get points before the half. Bahar pressured, throws it away, and that was the right decision. So this is where it becomes really tough to protect and give your accurate quarterback Bahar time in the pocket because Daka there runs a tackle in twist, meaning they take the end and run him inside. They take the tackle and wrap him outside. And it confuses the right guard and right tackle of Monmouth. This is a really good pass rush with Carter and Daka in a predictable passing situation. Pocket collapsing. He dumps it down complete to Lonnie Moore. Has the first down to the 35. And again, James Madison's going to get back Adiba Tarwa in the second half for a well-rested defensive unit. Mom is still with two timeouts. Clock does stop in college football to a first down. There's the tempo we were expecting. Finds Terrence Green, first down inside the 20. The difference there is they decide to max protect, so they keep the running back and tight end in, which gives them enough time to find Terrence Green over the middle. And they're trying to go as fast as possible because they don't think James Madison can keep up with them right now. Not using that timeout. Throwing for the corner, incomplete. Little bit of contact with Rashad Robinson. Defending Zach Treadway over there, but no flag. And now that you're this close, Hudson, you gotta, you gotta find a way in the end zone. Here's the back shoulder ball that Zach Treadway just wasn't quite expecting from Bahar. Second and 10, you can attack all areas and levels of the field here because you've got two timeouts remaining. And if James Madison is going to play two high safeties and leave and vacate the middle of the field open, I try to attack that with Lonnie running down the middle. They dump it to Guerrero. He makes the catch, but Holloway is on him and wraps him up. Dimitri Holloway, big tackle. Stops Guerrero for a loss and forces Monmouth to call a timeout. Timeout, Monmouth. It's second of the half. Well, James, James Madison is in two-man coverage, meaning you're in man-to-man -man with the running back. And usually you want to run a screen when you're catching a defense in an all-out pressure or a blitz. And James Madison was doing the exact opposite. They were actually playing coverage and manning up, and that time the screen just didn't work out. Now tomorrow, kick off your week 14 in the NFL with ESPN and the ESPN app. An hour earlier this week, 9 a.m. Eastern, they'll talk about how who dat became a Saints rallying cry. Randy Moss ranks the week's best catches. And Kirk Herbstreet joins Countdown to preview the playoff selection show. Also have stories, injury updates, previews of each game right up to kickoff. That is NFL Countdown Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Because it's third and long here, I would expect James Madison to rush four, try to get pressure with Carter and Daka, and then they're going to drop seven or eight in the coverage. And so Kenji Bahar might have to find a little extra time with his legs, buy a little extra time in the pocket to get a first down. He does buy time. Directing traffic as well and has to sail it away in the direction of Green, but never a catchable ball. And it looks like a field goal try coming for Monmouth. That's exactly what Barr did there. But James Madison in the second there, you can see they get a chip right there on Carter with their running back. And he's asking his receivers to come back, work back to him, and he kind of just sails it out of bounds, nothing open. Great job by James Madison in the secondary, plastering on the receivers, staying on the receivers, even when the quarterback gets flushed out of the pocket. 36-yard attempt for Matt Mascara, 15 of 19 on the year. And a timeout taken. That block is not going to count. James Madison is excellent at blocking kicks. But James, you had already taken the timeout. Dimitri Holloway saying, why? 
James Madison. It's second of the half. We have 30 second timeout. So that gives Monmouth something to work on. <laughs> Can't let that happen again. No, it was the right call. Coach is trying to ice the kicker and Madison player just comes untouched. Remember, that a blocked punt already in the first half where a guy was untouched. Total miscommunication along the right side of Mamas field goal unit. Sean Clark, number 86, one of those over there. Yeah, dodged a bullet. And if they overload that side now, D'Angelo Amos has three blocks on the year, second in the country, number 24 for James Madison. Just keep that in mind. Matt Mascara trying to make it a two-touchdown game headed into halftime from 36 yards away. Blocked. Blocked again twice in a row. No dice. Garrett Gruel got through. Well, Gruel was the one complaining that the timeout had gotten called and Mascara here this time just doesn't get enough elevation on the kick. You can see just way too much leakage given up by Monmouth's kick uh, uh, field goal unit there for the second straight time. Way too much leakage. Leakage being? Leakage being guys coming free. And that'll do it on the first half. Monmouth had a chance to make it a two touchdown game. James Madison denied them after scoring on all six possessions in that first half. They've led it the half of every game this year, including the West Virginia game, which they lost to open the season. 11 straight wins since. And we're joined by the James Madison head coach, Kurt Signetti. Kurt, how did you guys react and respond to those two early Monmouth big plays? Well, I mean, we just played our game one play at a time. I mean, I think physically we're taking it to them. You know, they had a 96-yard run. They had a kickoff return, and they hit a go ball. Those are all space plays. You know, the, the block and tackling part, I think, you know, we're, we're, we're dominating them. I mean, I guess to our team's credit, we haven't lost our poise. But, you know, it's still a ball game. We get the ball first here in the second half. Coach Ben DiNucci came in completing 70% of his passes, completing 77% today. What do you like about him and how he's distributing the football? Well, 7% more than his average, So, and but he makes plays with his legs, too. You know, our guys are doing a good job getting open lines, giving them good time. Kurt, thanks for your time. Good luck. Thank you. Kurt Signetti joining us with a 17-point lead. James Madison took an early shot, responded in a big way. Dukes by 17 at the half. Much more still to come here in Harrisonburg. Welcome back to James Madison halftime in round two of the FCS playoffs. Halftime at Bridgeforth Stadium and James Madison, which reached national title games in 2016 and 2017, on course for a good start this year, up 17 on Monmouth at the half in the first game of the day. One other game already underway, and it's the one that matched up with our winner, South Dakota State, out to a lead on Northern Iowa in Brookings, 10-0. Everything else is later today. And what you want to keep in mind, the seeded teams all had buys last week. Last year, all eight national seeds won and advanced to the quarterfinals. So we'll see if the seeds can hold serve or if anybody can pull an upset, including this Monmouth team, down 17 at the half. But we saw how explosive the Hawks can be. We'll take a look back at the first half highlights and more when we come back right after this.
Halftime at James Madison this afternoon. The Dukes out to a 38-21 lead on Monmouth through 30 minutes. Wasn't quite that simple, though. Joined by Georgia quarterback Hudson Mason. I'm Jonathan Yardley. And Hudson, JMU jumped out, or Monmouth jumped out on JMU early. How did the Dukes respond? What did you see in that first half? Well, I think the biggest difference right now is JMU is just dominating up front. You know, Monmouth can't get a they can't get a push in the run game. Uh, they can't get any uh, they can't disturb the quarterback at all. So I think James Madison is doing what they want, uh, bullying the guys up front and really distributing the ball nicely throughout the offense. We talked about that Monmouth fast start to the game. They fumbled the opening kickoff, but the first play from scrimmage, Pete Guerrero took it to the house, 93 yards. Yeah, Pete Guerrero showed if you're not uh, persistent in your run gap fits and not where you need to be, he'll take it to the house. That was the first play of the game for Monmouth. And then James Madison responded nicely, throwing the ball in space to Polk. The former Penn State graduate transfer takes it to the house. Monmouth kept coming, though. The ensuing kickoff, Lonnie Moore takes it the distance, 93 yards. Yeah, we knew James Madison's been having a problem with short kicks on kickoff. And Monmouth makes him pay with an unconventional special teams touchdown. From there, though, the James Madison offense really took control. Six possessions in that first half, scored touchdowns on five of them. Yeah, and, th and that's the key is points in the red zone, and then again here, the short yardage situation where James Madison is so good. The numbers from the first half, other than the Guerrero touchdown, it was pretty much dominance from James Madison. 382 total yards to Monmouth's 201, and check out the time of possession. Yeah, it's really ball control by James Madison, and they're doing it not only running the ball, but throwing the ball as well. Total yards, 201 to 382. Total domination. Monmouth has to find a way to get a stop on third down or get a turnover to get back in this game. We'll hear from the Monmouth head coach, Kevin Callahan, shortly when he comes back out. But you talked about finding a turnover. I mean, when you're not getting the push, yeah. the way Monmouth is losing at the line of scrimmage, what can you do? Well, they're going to have to commit more uh, to the box and running the ball, but also get to commit more in blitzing. And uh, they're going to have to live and die by playing man coverage on the outside because James Madison's running the ball right now, and, and there's, they're having a lot of success doing it. We'll see if Monmouth can make those adjustments. We'll hear from the Hawks when we come back. Halftime here in round two of the FCS playoffs. JMU up 17. Back in Harrisonburg, Virginia, right near I-81. If you've ever driven by Bridgeforth Stadium, you know it stands out for the purple and gold seating. And right now it stands out with James Madison leading Monmouth 38-21 and really took over 31-7 after that opening salvo from Monmouth. A lot of it behind the play of the quarterback, Ben DiNucci. Yeah, he's been playing really well, not only in the passing game, 14 of 18, completing 77% of his passes. You can see some of the perimeter throws where he gets the ball to guys like Polk here in space, and they do the rest. But then protection. Look at the little Patrick Mahomes sidearm-esque for a touchdown. He's been doing it in a lot of different ways. And then 63 rushing yards and a touchdown. He's killing Monmouth with his legs on some of these predetermined zone reads where the defensive ends crash down hard. He started six games at Pitt in 2017 but was ready to transfer. His mom and Kurt Signetti's sister are best friends. Kurt Signetti was coaching in the conference at Elon, so he actually ran the transfer by Kurt Signetti, who said, yeah, uh, James Madison, good place to be, and winds up there as his head coach two years later. And I think that's something James Madison does a really good job of. They, they've got former Division I players uh, littered all throughout this roster. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the main reasons why they've had such sustained sex success here over a long time. And again, Danucci paying his own way to go to James Madison. Didn't have a scholarship available, at least when he arrived. Ninth season as a head coach overall for Signetti, but his first with James Madison, which will get the ball working on this 17-point lead. And this first possession, Hudson, is going to be an important one to see if Monmouth has made any adjustments that are going to work. Yeah, they, they got to figure out a game plan because they've been trying to commit more and more as the game goes on to the run. And then when they do that, uh, they leave their defensive backs out on an island, very susceptible in one-on-one -on -one passing situations where uh, Ben has, has taken advantage of it. Matt Muscara to kick off for Monmouth. Another floater, another fair catch. Fair catch. 
All right, serious question. Why don't you just put four good return guys on the field and have a return man as the up man to run that back? Well, I don't know, man. Maybe you should be a coach then. <laughs> I, I know someone's already thought of this, and I'm not reinventing the wheel up here, but it just seems like if they're going to kick it short, you should try and run it back. Don't just take the ball to 27. Well, I mean... Yeah, but then what happens if they decide to kick it deep and then you, you, you've you got... Uh, Someone who doesn't know how to block? Yeah. All right. Teach them how to block. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that one. CAA Offensive Player of the Year leads the country in completion percentage, fifth in JMU history in completions and passing touchdowns. I mean, you see that 75% pass completion in seven games. <laughs> It's hard to complete 70% of your passes and routes on air, let alone against another defense. He's thrown for two, run for one today. Checked something at the line, gives to Hamilton, trying to turn outside, and he's finally pulled down there by Davis Smith, the freshman from Haddonfield Heights. We mentioned transfers. Juwan Hamilton, a UCF transfer. They've got a pit transfer at, at quarterback, a UCF transfer at running back, and... You know, they're, they're, this James Madison team is a Division One team in terms of talent playing at the FCS level. Polk is from Penn State, and then on defense they've got Ohio State, Rutgers. And Stapleton is tackled just shy of the first down. It'll be third and short coming up. I can't help but when I watch Ben Ninducci, uh, he, you know, he reminds you of a lot of different quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes with the, with the sidearm release, but... Who he reminds me of right now is Devlin Hodges, the quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who you know played at the FCS level last year, set a ton of records. You know, smaller in stature, but he's going to get a shot at the next level because he's got a quick release and he gets rid of the ball quick. He's, he's very sharp in between the ears in his mind. And Jay Obese, the short yardage back, dives forward and has the first down for James Madison. Well, what's going on? It's been a minute, 10 seconds, and nobody scored. Right, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, we came out the gates trying to get a uh, to get a feel for everything, and yet a special teams touchdown and a 93-yard touchdown by Monmouth. But I think you're going to see more ball control by James Madison in the second half. They're going to try to take advantage of this lead, a 17-point lead, and just lean upon that big, big offensive line that Monmouth hasn't seen anything like that this year. Quick throw out to Brandon Polk. The Penn State transfer has a touchdown today. Locked up after a gain of just two, though. It'll be second and eight. And that was the guy that Kurt Zignetti said, that's the biggest difference from last year. They didn't have a guy like him who can stretch defenses over the top and make plays underneath. No, he can. He's... You play coverage, he'll kill you in yards after reception. And if you want to blitz and play him one-on-one, -on -one, he'll run right by you. Straight drop all day. And it's Brown, who had a touchdown earlier as well. Jake Brown going to... It's going to be a tight decision whether he got the first down or not. The redshirt junior gain of eight. And they'll give him the first down on the spot. See more of a methodical approach where in the first half they were going up tempo trying to snap the ball every you know 30 seconds Hamilton the tailback gets the call trying to find a crease and Daquan Grimes hung him up the redshirt junior from Gaithersburg Maryland who is petitioning he hopes to have not just one more year of eligibility but two more years and he is very similar story to that portrayed in The Blind Side. It was being raised by his grandmother, who wound up uh, living with the family that helped buy him cleats and get him access to play football. Started, he calls them mom and dad. He's still in touch with his whole family. As Hamilton able to break one, gets past Grimes, gets past almost everybody, down to the 20 for James Madison. Well, Jawan Hamilton again, and he gets to the second level. He's explosive, but watch a right tackle, number 77. Climb to the second level, that's Liam Fornado, and he really gets the key block that allows Jawan Hamilton to get an explosive play in the run game, and they define explosive plays in the run game as 15 yards or more. 86 yards on 12 carries for Hamilton. 
make it 13 carries. And he's over 90 yards before he's driven back. Pick up of five right there. That's really the biggest difference from Division One football and FCS level, and that's why I think James Madison is going to have a, a great shot at winning the whole thing this year is because they're so big. They're, they're like a Division One team up front. You know, from, from left tackle to right tackle and really on both sides of the ball, they're built like Division One FBS team. James Madison over 200 yards running behind that line today. Jay Obese searching for room, didn't have any answers, and grinds in on the tackle again, as was Kurt Almer, the defensive tackle. Sounds like a ghost ship. Did everybody stay in the concession stands getting food at halftime? This thing's not over yet. Third and three for James Madison. First drive of this second half. Wide open in space. Brown couldn't make one man miss, but he does pick up the first down. Matt Castronova on the tackle. First and goal coming up for the Dukes. Well, Monmouth again decides to play man, and you'll see you get a rub route here. Two DBs on two receivers, and you get a natural pick. Force the DB to go over the top. Receiver comes underneath. Give it to him right now. Seeing that kind of that rub action by receivers. Can't call it a pick because that's illegal, but the rub becoming way more prevalent in college and pro football now. Tanucci kept it himself, and Powell able to haul him down for a loss. Evan Powell and Ben Danucci have had some run-ins today, and this time Evan Powell got the better of it. Yeah, I think uh, Powell w was given an earful at halftime when it comes to the zone reads. He was told, you know, quit pinching hard, quit flying down the line of scrimmage, make sure you see the ball handed off because Danucci killed him. One time down here in the red zone, Danucci, Danucci could have done backflips into the end zone. Nobody was out there. Twelfth play of this drive, second and goal. Danucci wants to take it himself, does take it himself. Second rushing score of the game. Forget last year, Ben Danucci is thriving in 2019. Well, just when you think that they're going to hand the ball off to one of their running backs, now they call the quarterback draw. And it's what makes this offense virtually impossible to stop in the red zone. So many different options to go to. They can throw the fade ball to Riley Stapleton at 6'5". They can hand the ball off to two of their really good running backs. Or if they got the numbers in the box, they'll run Ben DiNucci. Four rushing touchdowns this year for DiNucci coming into the day. Two on the day, including this one. They pull the guard, get a great kick out block by Jackson, the right guard there. And there's just not enough numbers on the back side defensively for Monmouth to account for the quarterback. That was a mean block thrown on Powell. DiNucci's thrown for two, run for two. And we talked about JMU getting the ball back after blocking the field goal at the end of the first half. Now putting this lead up to 24 points. You see the efficiency, 18 to 22, but then zero touchdown, or excuse me, zero interceptions. And, and that's the thing that Coach Ignetti talked to us about. His biggest stride of improvement this year for Ben has been his decision making. You know, threw a lot of touchdowns last year, but also threw, you know, some, some interceptions at crucial moments. You mentioned the five interception game where they got knocked out of the playoffs last year. You know, it's, it's one thing to throw for a ton of yards. It's a whole different thing when you have a great touchdown to interception ratio on top of throwing for a ton of yards. Camden Wise to kick off. What are they doing? And Ken calls a fair catch and then tries to take off running. I don't think they worked on short kickoffs in practice this week, either team. South Dakota State might want to uh, take note. There's Pete Guerrero, nation's leading rusher, took the first touch of the game, 93 yards. Since then, however, it is seven carries for nine yards. So we'll see if they can get him on track in this second half.
Kenzie Bahar, the quarterback. On play action, got hit as he threw, and it floats, and fortunately for Monmouth, falls to the turf. Is that Daka again? Of course it was. Who else could it be? It's either Carter, oh, could have been Carter or Daka. Yeah. It's either Carter or Daka, and that's been the story all year for him. And if you're going to, here's Daka at the top of the screen, number seven right there, and he just whips the right tackle for Monmouth Zuba. He's just too good. If you're going to leave him one-on-one -on -one with a tackle, he's going to take advantage of it. Adiba Tarawa, who was suspended in the first half, is back in. Here they use Guerrero on a screen. I was waiting for this throughout the first half. They finally do it and pick up a first down. Yeah, and, and this is the only chance that Monmouth has to get back in this game is get the ball in the perimeter because they just can't run the ball right now against this defensive front of, of James Madison. They're going to have to get a screen for a big play. They're going to have to rely on their quarterback to, to throw a great ball uh, into a tight window like he did in the first half for a chunk play. They've got to cut, find a way to cut the field in half with an explosive play. The give is to Guerrero, trying to find room to cut up field, and he has a solid gain there on first down. Were you surprised Monmouth didn't use more screens in the first half against an aggressive defensive line? Well, it's not so much the defensive line. You know, it's not like James Madison is doing a ton of blitzing. You know, they're just kind of loading the box. So it, it's tough to run score, screens when they load the box and they play press man outside because screens aren't great versus press man. You want off coverage. Well, that explains my question very well. Thank you. Guerrero going to be just short of the first down. Third and one or less coming up. Monmouth in that first half struggled on third downs. Two for six. I believe this is two down territory for Monmouth. And it's Bishop again behind the quarterback, Bahar. He gets the carry, and it looked like he fell toward the first down marker. It was pretty close. I'll wait for the spot, and it, the spot is short. So fourth and inches coming up. I think you have to go for this. This is nothing more than a quarterback sneak here. Well, out of the shotgun. That would not be a quarterback sneak. <laughs> You'd have to get under center for it to be a quarterback sneak. Better than 50% on the year, Monmouth. 17 for 29. Bishop still the back, the uh, man in the backfield. It's zone read. Bishop didn't get it. He's thrown back. JMU defense stands tall once again. I don't understand that. You're fourth and inches. All you need is your quarterback basically to fall forward. And sometimes I feel like in these spread systems, coaches are too adamant about not getting under center. And, you know, James Madison calls an all-out run blitz. You know, they, Monmouth does a muddle huddle where they, for two plays in a row, it's a bit predictable. And when you're in the pistol alignment like that and you catch the ball five or six yards deep, it takes forever to develop. Dimitri Holloway and company stood him up and turned it over. JMU rolling. You won't find a big play chain on the James Madison sideline, but it's not for lack of big plays. Dimitri Holloway and the defense standing Monmouth up third and one, fourth and one to turn the ball over on downs and hand it to Ben DiNucci and this impressive Duke's offense on the plus side of the field at the Monmouth 49. Right off the bat, Jawan Hamilton dropped into his own territory. Loss on the play. Grimes and Powell in there on the tackle. And that's just something we haven't seen enough of today, his tackle for loss. Even Kurt Armour right there, number 91, loops around and makes initial contact. We haven't seen enough second and tens out of James Madison. Danucci's thrown for two scores, run for two scores, trying to erase the nightmare of a five interception performance against Colgate last year from his resume. And again, we talked about the cushion, just huge cushion there, as it's Dylan Stapleton with ample yardage. I think he got 20 there for the first down.
And I'm not going to harp on the five interceptions too much. One was at the end of the half, one was deflected, but the point is they were knocked out in this round a year ago by Colgate and trying to advance to the quarterfinals in a matchup with either South Dakota State or Northern Iowa. Jack Rabbits lead that one 10 to three at the half. Throw took Polk backward, but he held on for a four yard pickup. He caught the first James Madison touchdown, his 10th of the year. Seven starts for Penn State a year ago, but he was injured back in 2016, so had the option to grad transfer. And Jay Obese finds a crease up the middle, and he's pulled down after picking up the first down. Davis Smith got to him, gain of 11. Well, a lot of times, Monmouth's defensive front, you see Kurt there, number 91. He's stunting the wrong way as James Madison is running inside zone to the right. And Percy really is able to get up to the second part of that defense without being touched. Third JMU ball carrier to go over 60 yards on the day. Danucci, Hamilton, and a Jay Obese. He's not pure power. He's got a little bit of side-to-side -side agility there and is able to find six yards on first down. Yeah, and, and like I said, I mean, I just, you look at him and he's listed at six foot 205, but he runs more like he's six foot 230. He's, he's a bulldozer in between tackles. He makes you miss. I mean, how many times we've seen today, Monmouth defenders, nobody's brought him down in one-on-one -on -one in space. It, it truly takes a uh, two to three different guys to bring him down. He's that small back, but with big back, with big back attributes. Monmouth's run 34 plays today. This is play number 68 for James Madison, doubling Monmouth up, and a Jay Obese has another touchdown. James Madison rolling toward the quarterfinals. Again, not touched. Jay Obese is going to be patient. Look at him, just allow that crease to open up. Nobody, no Daquan Grimes, no Evan Powell, the linebacker position. But the biggest story coming in today was how would those linebackers fit in the run gaps? You got to have a hat in every single gap, and too often today, Monmouth hasn't had a guy at the right place in the right gap. Eight possessions for this James Madison offense, eight scores. Three of them by a Jay Obese, 52-21, Dukes. They're in a good mood on the JMU sideline, 11 straight since losing the season opener at West Virginia in a very tight game. They led that game at the half over their season scoring average and look to be comfortably headed to the quarterfinals. But Hudson, their ambition goes way beyond that. They expect to be playing in that title game, probably against North Dakota State in Frisco in January on ABC. We've got a long way to go. Both North Dakota State and James Madison have to pick up those wins, but we haven't seen anything yet that makes us think it'll be otherwise. Well, it's a great showing today. I mean, you come in averaging 42 points in James Madison, and they're well over that average so far today. And uh, Monmouth put up a good fight to start with a special teams touchdown and a 93-yard rush to start the game, but isn't hasn't really controlled the line of scrimmage like they thought they needed to. Kenji Bahar, the quarterback, redshirt senior, one of those who has changed the program, they feel, but he's thrown down by Daka. He lost the ball. Falling on it was the tight end, Quentin Parham. It'll stay with Monmouth. Second sack of the day for that JMU defensive line. You know, John Daka, what a case he's making today for the Buck Buchanan Award, which goes to the best defensive player at the FCS level. And, you know, what do you do if you're Monmouth? You slide protect all the way over to Carter and double team in, then you leave Daka one-on-one. -on -one. And if you do it to the other, then you leave the other one-on-one. -on -one. It just, it, it's, it's the pure luxury of having two great pass rushers like Carter and Daka on both ends. 
The offensive coordinator, Jeff Gallo, said the best guy that we see every week, JMU has four or five of them on that defensive line, and there's another. Daka in the house and dominating. And he gets a flag. The official tried to shoo him back to the huddle. He wasn't doing a whole lot. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number seven, his first. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that carries the automatic first down as well. And Daka going to be pulled for the moment. There he is again, number seven, just bull rushes right into the inside. And, you know, I think I've always thought great pass rushers are guys that have an initial plan, but then when the left tackle or right tackle or offensive lineman counteracts, they also have a contingency plan in their back pocket, and that's what makes Daka great. How do you flag that for all the things we see? Yeah, that's guy, soft. The guy put his hands on his hips and turned his head. Big deal. <laughs> Oh, boy. It's going downhill for Bahar in a hurry, but he recovers and finds Terrence Green for the first down. Just when you think it's going from bad to worse for Bahar, he gets sacked two times. He drops a snap, but he gets a penalty and a completion out of it. Going quickly, trying to set up Zach Treadway, and he's thrown down in the backfield. Rashad Robinson back after missing last year injured was not going to be denied there. Well, they tried to pump the, the bubble screen and then find the receiver running up the sideline, but Robinson does a great job of keeping his eyes in the right place and creating a four-yard loss. Monmouth, the champions of the Big South, including a demolition of Kennesaw State, which had been the, the boogie team for them since joining the Big South. It handled them every year. First playoff win in program history. Their stiffest test ever, though. The number two team in the country on the road. Room for Bahar to scramble. Dodges one and gets shoved out. It'll bring up third and manageable. He was hoping to go over 10,000 yards of total offense today. He needed 182 coming in. He's not there yet. Guerrero, the back, alongside Kenji Bahar. Question is, can they protect long enough? Find number five and find number seven. That clock's got to go quick off in Bahar's head. He throws a fastball too hot for Lonnie Moore to handle. Wayne Davis in coverage for James Madison. Just don't have an answer today for the pass rush of James Madison, and most people haven't. And I talked about that internal clock having to go off for Bahar, but you know sometimes you, you know you need those routes to develop, and you need time for them to get downfield, like on that case. And unfortunately, Kenji just has to get rid of the ball too quick because you know he's got two of the best pass rushers in the FCS coming for him. Ryan Cost has seen too much of the field today. He's had one blocked. Gets this off. Amos calls for a fair catch. Kurt Signetti told him, don't even run this one back. And there's a few extracurriculars, but nothing too much to speak of. James Madison in control right now. Gets the ball back. And, of course, you're watching V-Week on ESPN. One thirty-two to play in the third quarter here. Round two of the FCS championship. James Madison all over Monmouth, 52-21. After Monmouth had led 14-7 early. Beautiful day here in Harrisonburg. And James Madison looking for win number 12 in a row. They have the ball back at their own 26. And Danucci has thrown for two, run for two. Garcia J. Obese has scored three on the ground. And this is Dylan Stapleton, hauled down by Evan Powell. You know, at this point, Hudson, we've talked about it. James Madison is managing this game now. How does that change your offensive approach? Well, I don't think it changes my offensive approach a, a, a whole lot. You look at the, the distribution chart here, the amount of guys that have gotten involved, Polk, Brown, 
Bercy. I mean, it, it's so balanced. And Jay Obese gets the first down. Monmouth trying to strip it, and he holds on with two hands. And to me, there, people, there's a misconception about balance. Balance isn't just 50-50. It's being productive while being 50-50. If, you, if, you, if you're 50-50 but you can't run the ball, then the defense is is going to try to stop the pass and vice versa. So you know, that's the thing about JMU that's going to give them a great chance moving forward to win this whole thing is they can throw, they can run. I mean, you look at their numbers today, they're about dead even and run to pass. Keeping it on the ground now, keeping the clock moving toward the end of the third quarter. And it's a solid game for Jawan Hamilton. He and Jay Obese both over 90 yards on the ground in a dominant effort from this offensive line in terms of pass protection and in terms of creating running room. All eyes on the fourth quarter, and for James Madison, eyes on the quarterfinals. The Dukes trying to close this one out. Impressive up front, impressive from the skill positions. Ben DiNucci, Percy Ajay Obese having big days, and the Dukes in control as we head to the fourth. James Madison dominating at the moment as we head to the fourth quarter. Monmouth hung around into the second quarter, but it has been domination by JMU. They have not had to punt today. Paul Johnson in at quarterback for James Madison as we start this fourth quarter. And Solomon Van Horse with the carry, a little bit more pushing and shoving. We've seen a lot of guys helping each other up, but we've seen as the game is going on, a little bit more negative emotions after the whistle. Some third quarter for James Madison. Didn't even feel like they broke a sweat and dominated in the yardage and put up all 14 points. And you look at the missed field goal or the blocked field goal right before the half, and on top of that, 14 points in the third quarter for JMU and zero for Monmouth. Van Horst has the first down. You're going to get to see a little taste of the James Madison depth. They have four running backs they've used all year. Latrell Palmer not available, so they're really going to go with three today. Two of them are over 90 yards, and the third, Van Horst, just in now. Johnson throws his way, makes the catch. Tackle immediately made by Justin Terry. Cole Johnson's a kid that has played and started in the past. He's a redshirt junior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, and not as green as you would expect when talking about a backup quarterback, but big kid, big frame at 6'5". Doesn't have a lot of reps, but has started before. Coach will speak real high about his intangibles, though. He had the third highest single game passing total when he threw for 398 against UNH last year. Van Horst gonna be short of the first down, but not by much. Two hundred and seventy three rushing yards for JMU today when they came in averaging two fifty. It's just been a, a incredible performance by the five big boys up front. Cole Johnson's gonna get a, uh, a taste of that as well as he'll probably be doing a lot of handing off. The line pushes forward and Van Horst falls with them for the first down. I mean Kurt Signetti told us. You know, he went through all the reasons he thought Monmouth was dangerous. And I said, come on, tell me the good news. What do you have going for you? And he said, well, I don't think they've played anybody as physical as us or with our speed in a while. Yeah, and Andy Bobick, the defense coordinator, even said that. He, he, he addressed that as well. And they knew if they were going to have any shot, they had to win the line of scrimmage battle. They just haven't. No turnovers either way but a blocked, or deflected at least, punt, and a blocked field goal in James Madison's favor. Johnson gonna take off and run it. And he will pick up four before being taken down. And 
know, you're Shane Montgomery, the offensive coordinator for JMU. You really just want your backup quarterback to come in right here with a big lead and operate the offense. And, you know, you obviously don't want any turnovers, but you want to get them into the right play. That's what the offensive coordinator is looking for. Can I give you two plays at the line of scrimmage, and, and can you handle it mentally enough to get us into the right play and keep things moving? Eric Curlew in the backfield, redshirt junior from Reston, Virginia. He gets the carry and dives forward. Another third and short coming as this James Madison offensive line continues to pave the way. That's Truvel Wilson, walk-on who came from Division II Virginia Wise. Said, I didn't get a JMU offer out of high school. His one year of Division II ball, he played well enough to come in as a preferred walk-on. He went from deep on the depth chart to starting in preseason camp and now all CAA performer with this dominant group up front. There was a couple guys on this JMU roster. Dylan Stapleton, another guy that had transferred off from D2. Curlew gets the first down as the drive keeps on rolling. You obviously hear a ton about the transfer down to the FCS level from FBS, but rarely do you hear of a DT guy being good enough to transfer up to the FCS level. And James Madison has plenty of both. Division one transfers from FBS and two guys in Dylan Stapleton and Truvel Wilson that uh, proved their worth coming here and earning scholarships. Curlew running again. And they just pick up chunk yards time after time. Yeah, in this situation, you're told as a quarterback, don't break the huddle <laughs> until 15 seconds are left on the play clock. So I would imagine Kurt Signetti is telling Cole Johnson, don't snap that ball until, you know, you're about 15 or under. Maybe not so much with still 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, but... Curlew inside the 10, taking advantage of his opportunities. This is the third James Madison drive of the day. Fourth, I should say, where they've had at least 10 plays on the drive. and No need to pass right now. Just rely on the big guys. No, they're going to keep running it here in the red zone. And that was a, kind of a storyline within the game today. Red zone defense, you had to force this James Madison team into kicking field goals, and they haven't been able to do that. Solomon Van Horst back in. Dad played in the NFL on defense, and he gets thrown back here for a loss. Monmouth defense still playing hard. I mean, I, I can – forgive me for my ignorance, but I can't even remember uh, a time that James Madison has had the punt today. I can, nope. I, I can remember – Scored every possession. Zero punts. I mean – Seven touchdowns and a field goal. Only forced them into a field goal one time in the red zone, and you don't force them into punts. I don't care how good or bad you are. It's hard to win that way. Nine out of 12 on third down, and then the three times they missed, twice they went for it on fourth down and got it. That extra time they kicked the field goal. Johnson will throw here on second down and has the touchdown pass. Drew Painter, the tight end, with the grab. Just his fourth catch of the year. Well, Drew Painter, who played defensive tackle last year, and he initially bobbled it like, you, like an old-school defensive tackle. Well, Cole Johnson puts it right on the money. I was wondering if he had control of the ball with his feet being in bounds at the same time, but obviously that side ref standing right there solid and called it a touchdown. But what a, a, a defensive tackle being moved to tight end. You don't hear about that a lot. Kurt Signetti said it was one of the first moves I made because I had seen him earlier in his career at tight end and liked him there. Moved Painter to tight end. And here in the playoffs, first career touchdown catch for the sophomore from Hershey, PA. Hands, just good enough. ESPN's coverage of the FCS Championship continues next weekend. Quarterfinals on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN3. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. We expect one of those shows to originate right here because the number two national seed, James Madison, all over Monmouth, trailed 14-7 early. 
A beatdown since then, 52 to 7, since the Lonnie Moore kickoff return way back in the first three minutes of the game. Finally, somebody returns a short kick. And Morales does get across the 30, so slightly better starting position. Monmouth will keep the starters out there. Pete Guerrero needs a few more yards to get over 2,000 for the season. He had a 93-yard carry on the first play of the game. Since then, not a whole lot. Nine carries for 18 yards. And it's hard to blame him. There's not a lot of yeah. there's not a lot of creases to get through. They fake it to him and find more on a quick out. As Monmouth tries to salvage some pride here. Heck of a season for the Hawks. Talked about their second ever playoff appearance, both coming in the last three years. Now with the full scholarship allotment at FCS, that changes your recruiting. With playing in the Big South, that changes your recruiting. And they're in a great part of the country for recruiting. Uh, going up now against Rutgers, which Greg Schiano hopes to have the word out to be pulling in some of those guys. But it's going to be interesting to see what Kevin Callahan and this program can become. A lot of space, and Bahar found Guerrero across midfield to the JMU 45. Just enough on that to get it over a leaping Duke. Quarterback get flushed out of pocket. Just enough to Guerrero. Oh, the JMU defender. I thought it was going to die there at the last second. And nice job for a running back. Hand-eye coordination to catch it and get two feet in. 20-yard pickup through the air. That won't count toward his 2,000-yard rushing total. I hope someone has told Monmouth that, that they need to get him five more rush yards or whatever it is. That went right through the hands. I'm told he's only two yards away. Two yards. I, I, I have faith he'll get that. What an accomplishment, though, if he, you know, I expect him with seven minutes left, surely to get two more yards. Whether he does or he doesn't, I mean, he's an incredible story. He was a single-wing quarterback in high school. They built their offense around him because they'd never seen anything like it. They would just basically snap the ball and set up lanes to block yeah. for him. Went to Monmouth on a track scholarship. Won the 100 meters and the 200 meters in the MAC championship in the spring of his freshman year. And he said, I really miss football. He'd been going back to Lindhurst High School games all fall. He missed it. Went out for the team. Wasn't even in the media guide. August 2017, he wound up second team All-America. And they would have had an even more dangerous backfield. One of his compatriots academically ineligible this year, but they hope to get back next year when Guerrero will be a senior. The help thing that helped Guerrero is putting on a little bit more weight after he got done with track. And we told you he's their only scholarship running back as they dump it down to Lonnie Moore. Again, one guy academically ineligible, their normal short yardage carrier is hurt. And that's why we've seen them go to Bishop, who's a linebacker on the roster, in short yardage situations today. That's where playing an extra game, too, for Monmouth with the offensive line with the running backs banged up didn't help. That pass is tipped by Holloway and falls incomplete. Dimitri Holliday, number two, gets his hands on the ball. Very instinctive player, 6'2 for a linebacker, very tall and rangy, and he's been all over the field today. Surprisingly, we have not seen a turnover. The two teams that uh, really came in forcing a lot of turnovers. I thought Monmouth had to win the turnover battle to have any chance, and they haven't come close. And there is a turnover right on cue, and it's going to be six. Charles Tutt to the house. Ball game. 78 yards. Well, Bahar is trying to throw the out route to the sideline. It's a little RPO. He sees he's got one-on-one, -on -one and he just leaves the ball inside. And the rule of thumb on an out route is if you're going to miss, miss to the sideline because guys like Tut take it back the opposite direction, 78 yards for a touchdown. And the irony, as we were talking about, no turnover so far today. 
It happens following up that. Incredible. Charles Tutt from Centerville High School, red shirt senior, with a big moment. Second pick six of the year on this field. The other was one that turned the Villanova game, one of the critical wins in James Madison's season, one of the rare times they've been challenged late in the game. It was when M MJ Hampton went the difference to break a tie in that game, went the distance. And this time it's Tut as James Madison sets a school record for points in a playoff game. They put 66 on the board, and that incredible defense gets involved too. They know what's up. Thank the right people. They know who feeds those mouths. That's what I'm saying. Happy James Madison sideline rolling to 66 points today following the pick six by Charles Tutt. Camden Wise getting a workout on his kicking game. Part of the game they'd like to work on. Finally, the tight end, Sean Clark, chooses to return and again picks up some extra yards. Bahar's been fantastic this year with this touchdown to interception ratio, only eight touchdowns. You can see here it's an RPO. He's reading. He's got a, he, he gets fooled. He thinks it's a corner that's going to bail on the snap of the ball, and Tut doesn't bail. He actually drives on it. And not bad for your first career interception, the first interception this season. Takes it 78 yards to the house. Last 20 yards, I think he watched himself on the Jumbotron. Why not use all tools available to you? Still throwing, and Bahar short arms it and skips it toward Lonnie Moore. I think James Madison has done a terrific job of just fooling and really changing the pitcher up for Kenji today. There's a lot of times where, as the ball was snapped, they showed one defense. And they played uh, a totally different defense, and I think that's what happened on that interception as well. He thought Tut was going to bail and thought he was going to get a cover three soft corner, and he didn't. The give is to Guerrero, and he's losing yards. He's farther away from 2,000 than when the play started. Loss of five. Garrett Gruel got in there. He's had a big day. Come on, you can't let him come up less than 10 yards short. you got to find a way to no, get, get it on the ground. But third and long, you're not going to run him here. You know, I, I, it really wouldn't surprise me if the coaches were unaware. You know, and that's not a diss on them at all. They're just so it's not, it's not a priority. Right, it's not. The hard pressure as he throws. Ball is knocked out. They're going to rule it incomplete. Morris Carroll, one of those in on the hit. Jalen Green involved as well. Ball's thrown a little bit behind Lonnie Moore. He's had a great game today. Carroll just right there in zone coverage. I mean, the James Madison twos are as good as most ones defensively around the country. They sure are. Jack Sroba back deep. Flag flies. Contact with the punter. It was his best kick of the day, too. And it's not going to count for his numbers. Q Reed was late on the punter, Ryan Cost. Running into the kicker, receiving team. The penalties decline, first down. They declined it? Well, running into the kicker is not a, I believe, not an automatic first down. No, it's not. I guess, the, I mean, I guess you're right. It was his best kick, so why make him kick it again? <laughs> James Madison takes the ball back, leading it 66 21.
James Madison eyes literally are on who they will play next. They put up the South Dakota State Northern Iowa game in the break, and they're keeping an eye on that one. And if anyone has a chance at cracking those top two, ESPN's football power index says it is South Dakota State. Currently 10-10 with Northern Iowa in that one. But North Dakota State 59% and James Madison just behind them, the overwhelming favorites. As Gage Maloney has come in at quarterback, the redshirt sophomore from South Carolina. I mean, that's 89% for those, those top two, yeah. and then some of the other seeds are, are a factor. But if, if someone's going to beat James Madison or North Dakota State, for that matter, what's the uh, what's the method? Because obviously Monmouth has not been able to pull it off today. Well, I think it's like any other method in football. I mean, you gotta you got to, if you're playing these two teams because they're so balanced and they're so good on both sides, you got to get turnovers. you you got to find a way. It's not about just coming up with a good game plan. It's, it's making them have a bad day at the office and steal a couple extra possessions. James Madison keeping it on the ground, and Eric Curlew is breaking it. Finally tripped up at midfield. Justin Terry saving Monmouth's blushes for right now. He might have saved him from giving up a 70 spot. Again, the front side, but it's really the back side. That left guard, left tackle getting the push that lead to the gash plays for Curlew. He gets tackled an open field short of a touchdown. Over 300 yards on the ground today for JMU. More Curlew. This time he's met in the backfield and slung down. That's Solomon Manning, redshirt junior, a transfer from Rutgers. There's Gage Maloney. Mike Houston, his head coach last year, said he will be the starting quarterback at James Madison someday. That day is not today, but he's, Cole Johnson has another year, and so those two may be competing in the spring for the spot vacated by Danucci. Well, Gage was a the guy they were really high on in camp, but unfortunately got hurt and, and kind of prolonged his development, and then, uh, you know, obviously the season that Ben has had, but they speak very highly of Gage, and they do believe with Ben being a fifth-year senior and on the way out that it's going to come down to Cole and Gage. Of course, you never know what the transfer portal will bring. You do not. Curlew busting another solid run and another first down for James Madison. He's up around he's over 50 yards, so four rushers over 50 yards today for James Madison. 327 as a team on the ground. Yeah. Number nine in the country in yards per game. That's going to go up. And in yards per play as well. Trying to run out the clock on a dominating performance. Again, it was 14 to seven Monmouth, but that was in the first five minutes of the game. And James Madison has lived up to its billing since then. Good hit on the play by Davis Smith. I beg your pardon. Davis Smith has checked out by now, and that was Tyler Delgado, freshman. 51, not 21. Coach Signetti said that they want to lead the country in rushing and run defense. And... Uh, Boy, are they on their way to doing that? But so they're you, pretty close. Yeah, you, but then you combine that with, you know, the day that Ben has had at the office, over 270 yards passing, 21 to 25. I mean, it's just amazing the production they get out of both players. you got a speed playmaker in Polk. you got size in your receivers in the Stapletons. It's really versatile. They're up over 620 yards of offense today, a season high. And they will get either South Dakota State or Northern Iowa coming here to Harrisonburg next week. Stay tuned to NCA.com and ESPN.com for the broadcast specifics. But James Madison needs three wins to get back to Texas, where they won the national title in 2016, lost in the final in 2017. 
We should make, go back in the day to Mickey Matthews winning the national title here in 2004, kind of starting this whole prominent program type uh, reputation that has been built on and expanded. Curlew met by Solomon Manning. And Monmouth will see the clock run out on this one. James Madison, a favorite for the national title. They show why today, 66-21 demolition, ending Monmouth's best season ever. JMU on to the quarterfinals. James Madison on to the quarterfinals. We'll hear from the Dukes when we come back to Harrisonburg. James Madison 66, Monmouth 21 the final. Celebratory late afternoon in Harrisonburg, Virginia. James Madison, the number two national seed, rolls into the quarterfinals 66-21 over Monmouth. They will host next week, Friday or Saturday, against South Dakota State or Northern Iowa. And James Madison set to host all the way through the semifinals as they try to reach Frisco, Texas in the FCS title game. With Hudson Mason, I'm Jonathan Yardley in Virginia. Such an impressive afternoon from James Madison, especially the way the game started with Monmouth scoring two of the first three scores with big plays. And from there, James Madison on both sides of the ball was dominant. 623 yards of offense, the final total. They held Monmouth to 266 and scored on every possession except the last one when time expired. Kurt Signetti and the Dukes celebrating their first postseason win under this coaching staff and one of the heroes of the day, Ben DiNucci lit it up. Yeah, it started off with him throwing these RPO bubble screens, getting the ball in space to Polk, who's super athletic. Offensive line did a tremendous job giving him protection all day. And then you also saw him just kill Monmouth with his legs on the zone reads. Quarterback design run in the red zone. James Madison becomes a whole different animal in the red zone when they can run Ben Ninducci. They held the country's leading rusher, Pete Guerrero, to 10 carries for 14 yards after his early score. What makes this James Madison team so impressive to you? Well, I think they're just so balanced. You look at uh, how it's broken down today. 290 yards passing, just right over 300 yards rushing, and it's just so balanced. 600 yards of total offense with a lot of former Division I transfers. They're going to be one of the favorites to get to Frisco. They'll be hosting again next week in the quarterfinals. James Madison dominant today, 66 to 21 over Monmouth. A reminder, ESPN's coverage of the FCS championship continues next weekend. Quarterfinals available on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN3. For my partner Hudson Mason, for our terrific crew, I'm Jonathan Yardley. So long for us today. Enjoy your weekend of football. James Madison rolling into the quarterfinals.